insecurity is not a function of what you have. It's a derivative of what your identity is secured to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if your identity is secured to an insecure foundation, which is anything mm -hmm. that's subject to another person's approval or assessment of value, you will be insecure. And it was in that moment that I realized yeah. that everything I had meant nothing because I had secured my identity to the very thing that didn't matter, which was the mm -hmm. approval of man. If you would have came up to me three years ago and said, Nona, I think you're insecure. I would have said, of course I'm not. Mm. Like, look at all I have, look yeah. at all I've done. Um, but at the start of the pandemic, God forced me to confront myself in a very interesting way. Um, you know, I'm a speaker. I had a full calendar of engagements that year, like traveling internationally to speak. And of course, when the pandemic spun up, like events got canceled, they got postponed. And uh, I remember one morning I went to log onto a video conference for work. Mm. But before I did that, I grabbed my cell phone. I went on to Instagram because I was like, let me just respond to comments real quick. And I caught a glimpse of my news feed before mm. I went to my notifications. And there was a post from a friend of mine and she was sharing the exciting news that she would be speaking at this like huge women's conference that mm. normally met in person, but it went virtual. And uh, I saw the post and I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. And I scrolled down a little more and there was another friend who was like, come join me at this conference. It's going to be amazing. You know, there's going to be thousands of women. You should register. And I saw it and I was just like, okay. And I scrolled down again and there was another friend ah. and another friend mm -hmm. and another friend. And it got to the point where I was like, why wasn't I invited, mm -hmm. right? Like I knew all the speakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew the host. And I was like, why wasn't I invited to speak? It got so bad, y'all. <laughs> I clicked on people's profiles. I was like, how many followers do y'all have? Wow. I clicked yeah. on their websites. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. where else are you speaking? Like, I started to do all of this comparison calculus. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, why wasn't I invited? Why was I overlooked? Why her, not me? And in the middle of all these why questions, I heard the Holy Spirit ask, Nona, why does it matter? Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -mm -mm. And I was like, well, Lord, it matters because there's this huge event happening and I'm not speaking <laughs> at it. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, so do you believe that you only have as much value as the speaking invitations you That's receive? Good. And I was like, no, Lord, like I know your word says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that before I was formed in the womb, you knew me and you set me apart. And God said, no, no, your problem is not what you know in your head. Your problem is what you believe in your heart. Right. And because you do not believe what I have said about you, you yes. are insecure. Wow. And that thing landed on me like a ton of bricks because I was like, Lord, I'm not insecure. Like, look at all I have. Look at all I've done. And God was like, no, no, insecurity is not a function of what you have. It's a derivative of what your identity is secured to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if your identity is secured to an insecure foundation, mm -hmm. which is anything mm -hmm. that's subject to another person's approval mm -hmm. or assessment of value, you will be insecure. And it was in that moment that I realized yeah. Yeah that everything I had meant nothing because I had secured my identity to the very thing that didn't matter, which was the mm. approval of man. Mm. And I think many of us struggle with insecurity because we want so badly to be valued by man without realizing we were created with priceless value from the that's beginning. Yeah. yeah. Beginning. And I think that's why we struggle with it. And I mean, I just I'd love to hear if you've felt this, experienced this, because I mean, looking at us, people would probably say, of course they've never experienced that. Look at how beautiful <laughs> they are. I mean, speaking to tens of thousands of people. And it's like, I think that is something that we all struggle with though. Right. One thing that I love that you said was that you didn't know that you were insecure. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I totally resonate with that because being from a predominantly Asian American church with an Asian American mono-ethnic community, um, I remember, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a veteran, but I've been in ministry. <laughs> you know, I've been in ministry enough where I didn't think that I had a security problem. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. think yeah. I was insecure. So just like you, I kind of, I remember when that started to change and I started to walk into the multi-ethnic mm -hmm. sphere and realizing, wait, everybody has like social media yep. following. Yep. I don't know yep. we we're supposed to work yep. on that. Yep. Like, right. you know, I was raising children. Like, <laughs> right, I didn't know right. we were supposed to work on that, you know? <laughs> and you don't know, right? You don't know unless you walk into these new territories yeah. and interact with different people. I feel like sometimes uh, we go about being like, I don't struggle with that, therefore I don't need to care mm. about that. But even for myself, I remember when things started to change mm. and 
these things start to come out, all these thoughts start to come out. And I, I start to wonder, wait, am I supposed to be talking like that? Am I supposed to know those kind of people as well? Am I supposed to say, oh, I spoke at these kind of conferences yep. as well? You know, and uh-huh. I didn't. I realized my security was placed on myself. Yeah. Yeah. Where, you know, and that's what insecurity is. It's, it's security placed on the wrong thing. Yeah. Whereas genuine security is placed on God. I think it's natural to secure your identity to the insecure foundation of man's approval because Look, we have eyes to see when people approve of someone else. Like we can see when they're being celebrated. We can see when they're achieving the thing that maybe we desired for ourselves. But I think the way to get free from that compulsion to secure our identity to man's approval is to remember that it's fickle. It's never permanent. People's opinions of us shift like the current of the sea. The only thing that never changes is how God sees us. Because while we were yet in our sin, Christ died for us. Not when we won the award, not when we got the promotion, not when we lost the weight, but when we were at our worst, He felt we were worth dying for. Growing up, my insecurity just dealt with lack. If someone has, then that means I could never. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone got invited to something, that means they will never invite me. As if there's not going to be another conference. There's only room Mm -hmm. for one. And Mm -hmm. I think the Lord just took me on a journey like, I'm the God of abundance. Mm -hmm. I have more. There are things that haven't even been created yet that I've designed you for. Like, will Mm -hmm. you trust me? And I think... And so you can say you defeat insecurity, but as you continue to grow, as you continue to do new, do new things, yeah. you get to another yeah. level oh, of insecurity. Yes. And it's like, I thought I beat this when I was yeah. 22 years old. Mm-mm. And it's like, what is going on? And I love yeah. those moments because mm-hmm. then it's like, okay, I have a choice. Right. God, what is it that you're trying to show me about myself? It's because I don't think yeah. you have mm-hmm. more for me, is it? Right. And then yeah. you go into this true confession, being Mm -hmm. honest with God, and then he continues to realize or show you the lies that you've believed, Mm -hmm. and then you do something with it. You know, you Mm -hmm. both just uh, jogged my memory about something, um, and I pulled out my digital Bible, Um, Um, y'all. In the book of 1 Samuel, so everybody knows, you know, about King Saul and David Mm -hmm. and, you know, the toxic relationship they had because of Saul's jealousy. But what's interesting is Saul's son, Jonathan, who doesn't get a whole lot of airtime. No one talks about him. But (laughs) to me, he is the blueprint for how to get free from insecurity. Because um, in 1 Samuel chapter 13, toward the end, there's a situation where Israel and the Philistines, you know, they're always going going at it. But um, it says that Israel had no weapons. The only people who had weapons going into this battle with the Philistines was Saul and Jonathan. They had a sword and a spear. That was it. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is, Saul takes his sword and his spear and he goes and he sits under a pomegranate tree with 600 soldiers. Uh, uh, uh. Jonathan took his sword and his spear and a young armor bearer. Yeah. Mm. And he heads toward a Philistine yeah. outpost by himself. And he makes this statement that I wanted to read. Um, it says, Jonathan, this is 1 Samuel 14 and 6. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. And, that's it. Mm-hmm. and he goes and he okay. kills two dozen Philistines through the power of the Lord yeah. because he placed his full faith in who God is. Yeah. He placed his full faith in God's abundance. Yeah. Yeah. And he knew that God called them to go to battle. But he wasn't going to sit there and wait and be like, well, I don't have any soldiers, so I guess I can't win. Right. It was like, mm-hmm. to your point of scarcity, Jonathan was like, no, I know who my God is. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that if God has called me, he's graced me for this. So whether right. y'all come or not, yeah. whether there's opportunities or not, whether you approve or not, mm-hmm. I'm going to go and win this war on behalf of the Lord. Confronting the lies that convince us we don't measure up, that convince us we're not good enough, it really requires first being willing to contend with what triggers our insecurity. When we experience that friend get engaged and we're single and we wonder what's wrong with us, taking a moment to ask, why do I feel like I'm not good enough because I'm not getting married? Or maybe when uh, our friend gets promoted into the job that we wanted so bad for ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, why do I feel like I don't have value unless I have a specific job title? It's beginning to ask those questions 
that will allow us to confront the, the root of the lie that has made us believe that our value is contingent on what we do or what we have.